Hello everyone and welcome back to Sunday Club Scattered. Um, I'm sure lots of you have really enjoyed being back at school this week, seeing some of your friends and your teachers. And do you know what? It's the Easter holidays. That is the way to do it. One week on, two weeks off. That sounds brilliant. <laughs> if only it could be like that all the time. What are some of you going to get up to in the Easter holidays? Maybe get outside with your family. Maybe watch a movie. But definitely eat some chocolate. Whatever you get up to. Enjoy yourselves, relax, spend time with your families. But don't forget about God in the midst of everything. This is such an important season for the church. Jesus is the real reason we celebrate Easter. Today we're taking a closer look at what Jesus got up to one evening when he was out with his friends. But this was no fun night out. Jesus knew that he had almost reached the end of his time on earth and he was struggling with what was ahead of him. He was really anxious. He took his disciples to a place they knew well, to a garden outside Jerusalem. We pick up today's story in the reading from Matthew. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Grief and anguish came over him and he said to him, the sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went a little farther on, threw himself face downward on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, how is it that you three were not able to keep watch with me for even one hour? Keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed. My father, if this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. He returned once more and found the disciples asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. Again, Jesus left them, went away and prayed the third time, saying the words. Then he returned to the disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, here is the man who is betraying me. Would you rather have a sunny holiday or a holiday in the snow? Sunny. Holiday in the snow. Sunny. A uh, sunny holiday. Would you rather have chips or ice cream? Ice cream. Chips. 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 Would you rather be able to make yourself invisible or to be able to read minds? Invisible. Read minds. Invisible. Invisible so I could take the last cupcake. Would you be, would you rather be a bird or a horse? Bird. A horse? Bird. Bird. Would you rather be 10 years older or four years younger? 10 years older. 10 years older? 10 years older. Oh, four years younger. <laughs> would you rather eat rotten eggs or drink sour milk? Sour milk. Blah. Rotten eggs. Sour milk. Drink sour milk. Um, would you rather be really fast or really strong? Really fast. Really fast. Fast. Really strong because I'm already fast. Would you rather live where it's always dark or live where it's always light? Light. Live where it's always dark. Always dark. Always light. Would you rather go to the doctors or the dentist? Dentist. Oh, doctors. 
Doctors. Doctors. And would you rather discover hidden treasure or a living dinosaur? Living dinosaur. Hidden treasure. Living dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather is great crack. The choices that we make in that game are really fun, they're really silly, and they're meant to be. They're meant to be good crack. In our Bible story today, we find Jesus in a place where he has some genuinely difficult choices to make. Would he do his will or would he do what his father God wanted? After Jesus and his disciples had eaten the Passover meal, they worshipped God together by singing a hymn. And then they went to a place where olive trees grew. Not quite like this, but a little bit similar maybe. It was called the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane was a place that they'd been to lots of times before. It was really familiar to them. It was really comforting. Uh, it felt a little bit like home. This day has become known as Maundy Thursday and it's the day before Good Friday, the day before Jesus knew that he was going to die. He knew how hard it was going to be for the disciples but also he knew how hard it was going to be on himself. He told the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter, James and John, his most trusted disciples, and he went into the garden a little further. Jesus began to get really upset. He needed his best friends around him. He needed the most trusted people that he had to be with him at that time. The sorrow in my heart is so great it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch with me. But the three friends were exhausted and kept falling asleep. So what did Jesus do? He prayed. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. My father, if this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Jesus showed us that when we have difficult decisions to make, or when we're facing something really, really hard, we need to turn to God, our Father, for help and support. And we also need our friends around to encourage us. Take a look at what these boys have to say about our story today. Hey guys, we're back with another top five list. We're talking about another Easter story right before Jesus was arrested and put on trial. So here are the top five things you need to know about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus went to the garden to pray. Jesus was really stressed out, so what did he do? He prayed. He knew he was about to go to the cross to die. He was afraid and was asking God to help him. He wanted God to make it so he didn't have to die in a, such a hard way. But he also knew that God had a plan and he needed to trust that plan. So next time you're stressed or afraid, be like Jesus and pray, and God can help. The disciples fell asleep in the garden. They were supposed to be keeping watch for Jesus while he prayed, but they fell asleep. It didn't just happen once, they fell asleep three times. Each time Jesus went left them to go pray, they fell asleep. Man, they must have been really tired. But if Jesus asks you to do something, you should probably do it. Just saying. Jesus didn't look like the paintings. Did you ever see paintings of Jesus praying in the garden? If you look at them, they make it look like Jesus was really calm. But that's not how it was. Jesus knew he was about to go to the cross and die. So he was pretty scared. And that's important because even though he was scared, he still did what God needed him to do. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. Jesus was born to die on the cross. That was his mission, but he didn't look forward to doing that. He knew that he was going to be in a lot of pain, 
and treated like a criminal. But God sent an angel to Jesus to give him strength. That's pretty cool, right? We have a God that's willing to help us in the worst times. Jesus had to go to the cross. Nobody made him, but he knew he had to do it. But why did God the Father let Jesus die? Isn't that kind of mean? Let's find out. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Kids, we all sin and do bad things. So that means we don't deserve to be with God. But God let Jesus die on the cross in our place so that when we believe, we can be saved. So it wasn't mean to let Jesus die. It was all a part of God's loving plan. You haven't asked Jesus into your heart yet? You should ask a parent and teacher about it. They would love to help you see how much God loves you. I've come to church 
to say our prayers today and I wanted to teach you a, a new way that you can pray, a different way that you can pray. Uh, it's by using a coin. So if you flip the head side, can you see her there, you can see the coin. Um, if you get that, you pray for something that is in your head right now. So a person or a place or a situation that is in your head right now. And if you get the tail side, you pray and give thanks to God for something that is behind you, something that has already happened. Um, and that's just a really easy way that you can use something that you have with you all the time. We're going to pray now and I'm going to say just a really short prayer to wrap up our session together today. Lord, please help us to make the right choices in our lives and always to follow you. Amen. Thank you for joining us on Sunday Club Scattered this week and I hope we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks time. Have a really lovely Easter and I hope we'll see you soon. Bye bye.